the right time. All right, uh, you want to go ahead and get started? Let's, uh, let's do it. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, should we do uh, introductions, or I guess mostly, mostly people we all know. So I think, I think we're good. All right, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go ahead and do a General Assembly update? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, we have been uh, working with Sarah and our legislative um, consultant to try to get that $40 million back into the budget. Um, I just spoke with Senator Barker earlier today. He is working diligently to make sure that it gets in the Senate version. Um, of course, anything goes, um, and we won't know until the governor signs the budget. His Senator Barker felt that they may have a budget package to the governor at the end of May. So, stay tuned. last month he told me this month or this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, he, there's like all this noise going on in the background. He's like, "We're working really hard. This is crazy." <laughs> so, um, what we what we have are we have some handouts that uh, the last time I went down and lobbied, uh, we handed out to um, to some of the representatives. Uh, the top, I don't know what order they're in in your package, but there is one for the General Assembly. It's about the substantial funding, and you can see the fund rates. Uh, and then it gives you what the project is. So feel free to use these. Some other, the other one is just information about Alex Renew and who we are. And then the third one, a little off track of the General Assembly, is <clears throat> we had mentioned to you in the last meeting that the stakeholder advisory group had asked us to put together something to clarify what all the different water projects were in Alexandria. We had shown you a draft, and this is the printed version. We've given them hard copies. They've handed them out in their condo associations and different um, homeowner associations. So uh, they were pleased. It does help to try to clarify who's doing what, when, and where uh, as much as we can at this point. So uh, just, uh, just to let you know that we are working with everybody to try to, try to help get the messaging squared away as we move forward. So that's really all we had on the General Assembly piece. I don't know if you have anything uh, else that you want to add, uh, but we will keep working at it. If it doesn't get in this year, uh, we look forward to having you help it's gonna get put it, it back year. in next it's gonna year. It's going to get in this year. Yeah. It's Every little bit helps, quite honestly. Yeah, I think it's just only a matter of when they when they can get it done. So it could be as late as June. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Very we'll unusual see. for them to be this late, but... Politics. This is great, by the way. Thank you for yeah. putting this You're welcome. If you want more copies or if you want it in a PDF form, just drop me a note and we'll get it to you. Yeah, this is good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, the program presentation. We're going to talk about uh, tunnel boring machine delivery first and then uh, go into a couple other updates. We are. Um, yeah. We just wanted to give you a brief update since we last met. Um, <clears throat> we have a new stakeholder advisory group member. One of our other members had to leave. Uh, she moved out of the area, so Stephen App is now a new member. We had another SAG meeting in March. We are done with the tunnel boring machine fabrication. It is actually being uh, factory tested this week. Uh, we've done the slurry wall construction here at Alex Renew, those two big um, shafts. The walls are done, and we're going to start excavating them. Uh, as you know, Senator Kane and Congressman Byer came by and visited us for an hour in March. Uh, and we have work going on at all construction sites. Hopefully it's been quiet on your end and you haven't gotten a lot of complaints. Not a single complaint, not a single one. That's just great. Let, you know, knock on wood, let's hope. Yeah. Uh, people seem to know what's going on. And again, if something comes up, please feel free to reach out to me. So tunnel boring machine delivery. We wanted to run through what we think is going to happen. We put the most exciting thing first. This is the cutter head, which is 26 tons of hardened carbon steel. Uh, and you can see it's starting to get its paint, so you can see what it's going to look like um, in the River of New Colors. OK. I think Justin's going to walk you through this slide. We need it. It's a little, it has a little, there we go. Go so ahead. just before we, before we start the video, uh, just wanted to kind of highlight the TBM's journey from Schwano, Germany, all the way over to Alexandria, Virginia. It is quite uh, 
a trip. Um, so you'll see this short video. This will be shared with the public probably next week after we finish up with the factory test. But this is a video showing uh, how the TBM starts in Schwanau, makes its way up the Rhine River, across the Atlantic to Norfolk, and then up the bay to Occoquan and then to Alexandria. And you'll see the little lead icon there change uh, as the video plays for, where it goes from barge to, to ship to truck. So pull through the next slide. Two days, she should ship out the first week of May and arrive in the States in mid June with Alexandria delivery the last week of June, first week of July. I think are you are you riding it over? Is that <laughs> yeah? Can we go down and meet it? Have yeah, like a whole caravan? Come up? We're gonna <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> and just to say. Should talk to uh, Potomac River Cruises and see if we can. Right. <laughs> so, so just to get you prepared, if you want to start this video, um, we just got this this morning. Ray and Associates. Uh, they're in Germany. The teleporting machine's made in Germany, so the first unveiling. There she is. And it says it takes all hands to keep our waterways clean. And you can see we have uh, just a variety of different color hands and different logos showing the diversity that we have in the city and, and just thanking everybody who made an effort to make this happen for us. It truly has. We've had a number of people come and go on this job uh, to make it happen. So <clears throat> it's a celebration of all that. So that is what will be on our truck as it comes over. Justin's going to walk through a little bit more detail uh, about the tunnel boring machine and what it's going to look, what we're going to need in order to get it here. Um, not just the ship is complicated, but the logistics right here in the city um, are a bit challenging. So um, I guess thinking back to the TBM, it's an underground factory about 400 feet long. Um, most, most of the delivery of the TBM, uh, she'll be all packed up on one ship, multiple barges, but one ship we'll bring her over here. And the three pieces that we're really concerned about uh, requiring an oversized load to get to from Occoquan here to uh, Alexandria are those three pieces you just saw in the video. It's the, what we call the cutter head and front shield, middle shield, and then the, the tail skin. So that's the first 30... 35 feet or so of the TBM. Uh, again, when you think about this, she's about 15 foot in diameter, and again, about 35 to 40 feet long for that front piece. So when we're talking about this oversized load hauling, we're really talking about three loads, bringing that the colorful front end uh, of the TBM. The rest of this, the stuff, the trailing gear, and guts of the TBM uh, will be coming in on containers, and that'll come in on flatbeds. But what it'll look like when the TBM is unloaded in Occoquan. Yeah, yeah we, have a, we have a picture on the next slide. This is a national grid job out of London. Same exact size tunnel boring machine. Uh, again, made by Heron Connect. And you can see that we'll have, uh, to, since the weight is so great of these three pieces, 
we need to spread the load out so we can meet highway loading. So we end up bringing it in on what we call a low boy with multiple wheeled uh, vehicles. So this is a, about tr three tractor trailers long, and this will come in piece by piece over three days. So each piece of the shield will have to come in piece by piece over three days. And right now it's looking likely we're gonna, we're gonna come up from Occoquan, obviously up 95, and then somehow either come off 495 into Alexandria uh, to get to, uh, to the plant. But these are the types of deliveries we're looking like, looking <coughs> at for that, those first big pieces of equipment coming off the site. So jumping over to, jumping to a map of Alex Renew, uh, the Alex Renew properties outlined, come on, come up there. The Alcano property is outlined here in, in white. All of our deliveries to date have been coming across the North Bridge or South Bridge. Um, some of the big, big excavators, <coughs> big cranes, things like that, we've been bringing across the South Bridge. And at the North Bridge, we have, we have some existing structures. If you zoom in here, we've got a valve vault and a guardhouse. And then our bridge has load limits. So this, this turn is super tight, and we're not able to make it with a regular 18-wheeler. Um, so we're, we're, we're thinking that the TVM likely isn't going to be able to come across the North Bridge. And then everybody just drove under the parking garage, right? So when you're coming through that hall and lane gate, there's a clearance issue with a beam in there. So she's 15 feet tall with the low boy. Our clearance here is about 14 foot, one inch. So we can't get under to use the South Bridge. So Karen's going to talk a little bit about bringing the, the machine in through an easterly route. So normally we don't use um, the east side of the plant because back when the plant was built, this was all an industrial site. Eisenhower really didn't even exist as a road. I mean, when I started here, all we had were um, the Holiday Inn and the two Payne Kaufman buildings and the Eisenhower Metro. So this is really, um, we've, we've been encroached on a lot as a facility um, by the residences. Uh, so now what we're finding is <clears throat> not just for this job, but in the future, we're going to need to be able to get into the plant this way um, to bring in some of these big heavy loads. This is the only route we have that can get that tunnel boring machine in here. We've looked at trying to swing it across. We can't because we have the high power line, uh, voltage power lines. So we are really, really limited here. We almost become an island. Um, so our request is going to be that we're able to take this up Route 1, make the turn here, make the turn here, and then um, we haven't quite figured out of how we're going to bring it into the plant, but try to get it in through here because she's got to end up over here uh, to be able to be launched. So we'll work with um, the reg team to get these permits. We're already underway with DDOT to get all the permits we need to get uh, the tunnel boring machine in here and it will be delivered um, off hours you know maybe 10 p.m. between between 10 p.m. and um, 6 a.m. so it would make for a nighttime parade however you know you, you guys love parades so I'm yeah. sure you can let that sound good yeah can we get some Chloe costumes <laughs> you can go <laughs> with <them. laughs> I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to make you a Chloe costume. I'm going to ask her twice on this one. Yeah. Really, really long time. Um, <laughs> so that we wanted just to bring that to your attention, um, and especially uh, Mr. Ray or Ms. Spicewear, if there's any direction or thoughts for us that we need to think about. But this is, we, we are now super constricted on this side. Um, so anytime we have any other capital programs, then we will where we're limited at 14 feet or uh, with the You're thinking this is late June, you're saying? Yeah, the yeah. last week of June, first week of July, sometime in that. And, and ultimately, this is just uh, several oversized trucks going down these streets. So, I mean, this is not a significant, yeah, okay. It is, yeah, we're not rumbling through or anything. Yeah. It's, they're slow moving. Yeah. It's all okay. the size of them. Um, and we'll do as we always do, the right kind of community outreach. We'll make sure that everybody on this side knows about it once we have a, a better sense of the dates. Okay. So that's one of our first asks for tonight. So that's the big thrilling stuff. We thought we'd leave with that. And then the rest gets really boring. 
So we're just going to give you a tunnel project update. Um, the picture here that we're showing, this is, they're finishing um, the sh one of the shaft slurry walls here, so you can see. It's not as easy to see, but you can see kind of the wall that's in there and standing on some of that rebar and, and the number of concrete trucks uh, to make that happen. So they're very excited, as were we, uh, to get this slurry wall done. And stand up because this is kind of hard to see. So first we're going to start with the overview. And they mentioned before, we are now at all four locations, um, Alpha 001. Uh, Pendleton Street. You can remember we put in that curtain wall. They're going to start backfilling that area, um, and that can that will once they start backfilling, then they'll go dormant for a little while because we have to wait for the equipment from here. So they actually leapfrog. I probably should have started at four and worked my way backward. So we're doing the work here. We've built the slurry walls in the shaft because that's we've got to empty that first to get the tunnel boring machine launched. So all of that equipment and gear will now hot scotch over to 002, where they will do the same thing. That site is being um, readied as we speak, and we'll start that work here. And then once they're done building the um, shafts and slurry walls here, they'll go up to 001. So that's why that site gets a little dormant. And we're actually, that's actually where the, the tunnel boring machine will come through and where she'll end up. And then, oh, three, four, that's a little different construction. If you've gone by the front, it looks a little bit different right now. Uh, and that is basically uh, upsizing that interceptor that we had in place and then making new ones uh, along the way. So that's a general overview. <clears throat> Again, this is the schedule. The reason we wanted to put this in here, you've seen this many times. It's our general schedule. There is no float in the schedule. Basically, that means if we lose a day, if we, we're behind schedule. So we're always looking to buy float, to figure out a way, where can we do things a little bit differently uh, to make up time, to get some extra cushion in the job. And I will say we've, uh, the Trailer Shea has been really good to work with us and collaborate on uh, the way they look at jobs. And again, that's one of the good things about a collaborative delivery type of project is you work together to try to find the these things. For us, that schedule is what's really important and one of the drivers. So um, now I'm going to walk you through in detail about where we are on each of the jobs. So this is the site. As you remember, this is the work that we're doing. Here's the steel sheeting that we put in. Uh, and we'll be backfilling that. And you can see these are the major jobs right here. We'll backfill. That's through um, the end of this year. Sorry? Back will be done at the end of May. End of May, and then it stays dormant for a while. And you can see, so far we're on, on track both from a design and, and um, construction phase. Uh, 62, 64, that's about equal uh, and, and from statistically. They, they package some things a little bit differently than the way we had anticipated the original schedule, but all is good on that. <clears throat> one of the asks we have on this one, so I talked about schedule and where we can buy float. One of the places we can buy float is here, um, where we have to take the tunnel boring machine out. We had originally thought that we would remove that 400 feet of trail gear that Justin mentioned earlier. We would remove it back out through the plant. But working together, we said if we can take that 400 feet of gear out here, we can actually start doing the work at the pump station here and gain about 20 days a float in, in the job that has no float. So our ask here is to get a noise variance for the removal of the trailing gear. Um, it would be 24 hour work. It might be up to 30 days, but it would allow the contractor that ability to pull that comp that gear out while we're working back here. Um, and get so some float. 24 hours of, 24 hour work for 30 days? Um, on and off, for th is it constantly? For all 30 days or it's kind of on and off is what I thought. It, it would depend on the operation. I think the variance would be on for 30 days, realizing that we'd likely be intermittent throughout that time, just giving the contractor flexibility so we don't have to come back constantly get the variance. And when we when we say about work, this is work out adjacent to the shaft, out, way out on the river, yeah. picking up equipment with a crane, setting it on site, and then hauling it off. I mean, how, loud are, how loud are we talking here? 
So, right, it's, it's not much different than the mining operations here from the plant. So we have a maintenance shift off hours that we had a noise variance for at the plant. So it's a crane out there, it's a crane lifting up equipment and setting it on the ground. So there's no hammering, there's no, there's no real, it's just a hum of a crane. And you can see it's at the far, far end away from any. And when would that be, you said? Fall, winter of 23. Oh, fall, winter of 23. Okay. Yes. When you're pulling it out. Yeah. Okay, all right, so we got a, we got a while to worry about this. Okay. Yeah, you do. Okay. We're just, we're trying to, you know, prep you. I got you, I got you. Well, no, no, things no. That are come up. So this is something that um, we'll be asking for, and you may see it sometime in the future, and this nope. is the reason why. Okay. Oh, two, uh, like I said, that is working the way that it has ready getting uh, to put the slurry containers on so that they can move the equipment now that we're done the slurry walls here, over to LO2 and start working on the shaft uh, that you see there. <clears throat> Three and four, so this work is really progressing and progressing nicely, um, but it is some very intense work. They're working down by um, the uh, resident merit, merit residence in, uh, down in that area. This is Maria the Micropiler, um, having a good time. Uh, putting those piles in so that we can everything that out. shaft area. Yeah. Uh, and then we have started on the south side of Jameson Avenue. Uh, you can see here they're building that temporary construction access. If you've walked out there, um, I know I walked up the street the other week and uh, I was amazed at how naked it looked. Uh, we've done a lot of invasives removal. It's not that we've cut trees down. We removed a lot of invasives and it does give you that naked look. Um, I think, though, oh, I'll let Justin walk through this, and then we can talk through um, the next steps. Yeah, I, when we talk about the complexity of the job, we've always said that the host run intercept is probably the most complex and most impactful on the community. North is up to the right. Here's Duke. Here's Holland. So things to know that you're going to see between now and August of 2023 is we're, we're going to start having impacts on Duke Street. Uh, those impacts will only happen during non-rush hours, so 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then the lane will go from, it'll, Duke will be reduced to one lane. After those times, it'll open up to two lanes to accommodate the, the a.m. and p.m. rush, as well as weekend traffic. So in that area, will be the, reduced to one lane going east or? Eastbound. eastbound. Yeah, so eastbound Duke Street is the only, the only lanes impacted are, are eastbound Duke Street, which gotcha. is open two to one, right next to La Porta's. The sidewalk adjacent to Laporta's will be closed as well, so we, we showed you all the detour of that last time. The sidewalk along the Marriott's closed. We have some sidewalk closures on Jamison. Um, you will see flaggers out there on Jamison when we do have the sidewalk and lane impacts on Jamison. Uh, Jamison will also be reduced to one lane at times, and at, at some point Jamison will be closed for about three months while we get the host run intercept there across the road. None of that work will be concurrent with Duke for Duke Street closures. So Duke and Jamison are never concurrent. So you will see flaggers out there helping pedestrians, especially we have to zigzag if you're coming along the north side, across the south, back over to the north to go all the way to Holland. So it's a bit of zigzagging. So we will have flaggers posted uh, right at the, the, the post run bridge. In the park, we have the path is closed. Our staging area comes through here, so the path is closed until August 2023. And then at the very south end of the entrance exit at near Alex News North Bridge, we also do have a sidewalk closure again during, during working hours. At night, that opens back up. Uh, one other thing to note, the work with Sagres and the city, we have a weekly coordination meeting. We also talk to our reg team uh, every two weeks about coordinating the work with, along with River Renew and Eisenhower widening that project's happening at the T and all the way up the street. So we are coordinating haul routes uh, with that project as well. So I mentioned it looks naked. Uh, we do have some signage up. Uh, and what we will be doing is restoring what's out there with native species. And hopefully we can get some of the impact of native species. So this kind of gives you an idea. Year, you know, because the job kind of has pieces to it, hopefully we can give everybody else hope, right? You get to see little spots of brightness as the project goes along, um, and hopefully that helps people <coughs> deal with 
the appearance and some of the inconvenience that'll be going on because they also will get to see some benefit at the end of the day, the multiple benefits of this project. And then here's, except for us here at Alex Renew, I guess, um, we will be working through 2025. Uh, as we noted, the two shafts are done. Uh, and then we'll be able to launch her um, in the late July timeframe and get her going. But we've got all that work done and that equipment now is moving to the top model too. And just a, a reminder, when I said it's, it buys us 20 days afloat, that's because we can start working on this. This is a super complicated pump station. There's a, a series of different pump stations that pump from different places. Uh, to keep the water flowing into the system. So the sooner they can start to put all the pumps and uh, INC and all the electrical in there, the faster we can get the job done and get those trades in there. So uh, this is what it took to get it done. We have the 72 foot wide, the 40 foot wide. This is the screening shaft. This is our pumping shaft. And then this is what it took, 500 tons of reinforcing steel, 2,000 trucks of concrete just to build the sewer. So more coming <laughs> as we move forward. And then the bathtub, of course, that's a breakout. That allows her to, um, as she breaks through this, not move the earth as much as she starts to build that tunnel. So it keeps that, that earth safe so that uh, it doesn't uh, impact any of the other structures around us by having that earth. <clears throat> OK. Project Look Ahead, moving right along. You have no questions, it's great. Um, so this has been Senator Kane visited. Uh, it's really impressive how he was able to uh, connect with all of the workers that he talked to. He did a great job and, and they really appreciated it. So over the next six months, this is what the public and you will be seeing uh, as we go through. So Pendleton Street, we've talked about that. It's a backfilling operation and then it'll go quiet a little while, so it'll be deceptive to people like, hey, they got, they're doing this job and they're so quiet. No, we're actually not doing anything right now. So we're just hanging out. At Royal Street, this is where they're going to start building um, the shafts. We've got a picture here of what it looked like here. That's what it'll look like down there as uh, the kids go to school. We do have some noise variances and they've already been approved, so we've talked about them before. We've talked about the hook run interceptor, so they're working away building that diversion chamber up by the hotel, uh, and then the line where they will be slowly excavating, replacing the smaller lines. And the work here, this is where we'll be launching uh, the town boring machine uh, after our get together in July. I think Justin's gonna touch on that. So that's what we'll see over the next six months. What I wanted to walk through is to we keep talking about the plant and everything can go down here, but there's a lot of asks around the plant. And I wanted to lay that out so you're aware of what we're asking of city staff, and they may come back to you and it may delay them, uh, and this is the reason why, um, is that we don't have a whole lot of room on the site to do what it is we need to do in order to make sure River Renew is successful when it starts up. Uh, it's not just a tunnel project, but we have to do a number of improvements throughout the facility to make sure we can get the flows through the plant during that wet weather time. So these are the projects that we have. So River Renew is in the purple, but then we've got um, what we call Building G Replacement, where we built and took all the stuff from here and put it in this building, like the lab and locker rooms, maintenance shop, uh, operator station. Um, that is an old building and it's still not even though we covered it, it's still not quite where we need it to be, and we've got to secure that building. Um, we've got to get UV up and running. That, that's been an ongoing CIP project. It, after so many years, you have to replace those bulbs if you want to stay compliant with your um, permit on bacteria removal, so that has to get done. Uh, we've got um, uh, some preliminary work up here that has to get done in these three buildings, uh, one of butts the fire department space, and also we have to upgrade the secondary tanks to make sure they work. We've been working with the city staff. Um, this is what we call the old Cameron Run Trail. That's the bike path. Uh, I know you have a project for that. We have asked them to delay um, doing any construction until after 2025, 
as we can, we work with them on design. Sometimes they'll have some folks in here poking holes or doing some survey work. So it's just we ask them to coordinate with us because it's a lot of effort to make sure that they're not impacted. Um, the other, there's two other things going on. There's the fiber optic program and um, project implementation is actually working to relocate where they're going to put that fiber optic um, rather than down here around the plant, perhaps somewhere else um, up up Holland Lane uh, to help with that. But that's another one that's. We've asked them not to come on the plant or do this work until we're done because there's obvious impacts in the down areas. The other reason that this is important is you see this little white line. Once she starts, well, once we start actually uh, excavating these shafts, which will be soon. Next week. Next week. Um, we're going to start really seeing an increase in truck traffic. So you may hear about that up to 140 trucks a day between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And this is the route they take. So they'll come through the plant, they go out, out on Plant Street, come back out, um, and then swing out. And that's about one truck every five minutes during that time frame. So we know we've had, we just met with the um, general services folks. We were unaware that they had planned to upgrade that fire building. Um, and we told them that there's no way that we could coordinate with them to have their work done at the same time our work was done. They were actually talking about starting construction in December or January for their CIP. So they may have to present to you or the city manager about uh, recalculating their CIP uh, and what that means both for the CIP but also uh, for that fire department training an investment in the staff. You're saying that work can't happen until after you're done, 2025? Hmm. All right. There's, there's no lay down area for that. They, they need trailer, they need lay down, they need access to the site. Um, and when you're running a truck every five minutes, there's no way we could coordinate all that work um, and have all that um, together. So um, they reached out. Um, we had a meeting the other day. We will. Uh, do what we can to facilitate their planning and concepting and uh, get them drawings and uh, where we can design work. Um, but uh, once they scope that out, we can talk about um, doing, the, doing the work. But you can see we've got this, but we also have work in this building, this building, this building, and this building that has to happen in order to make this successful. So this is all the preliminary primary treatment that we have to make sure it can take the extra flow. And that's where we're challenged. We just are land constrained. And we are already limited on lay down areas and easements that we had to purchase in order to have enough lay down area to do this job. So that was a 2024 project for us, so. Oh, that's interesting because when we talked to him, he said they were expecting to start it in December. So I mean, maybe planning, but they, the, the, the big money for that project is FY24. Now they moved. They moved it from twenty three um, okay. with this proposed budget. So, all right. Well, that's good to know. That we'll we'll work with them on design. And I just wanted you guys to be prepared because I know that that they were they were very concerned about the, the impact that it would have on the CIP and also what it would mean to um, training of the fire department. Yeah, I mean it's badly needed. Yes. Um, so it's. Uh, was built in 81 with a 30 year life. So, understand. <laughs> it's 2022. <laughs> so, been there. That's, that's where we are. So, that's what we wanted to, to <clears throat> lay out and show like the different progressions. 23, June of 24, we're going to use all this area to lay down and um, impact that area again along here. And I will say the, the folks doing the bike path and have been helpful when we've reached out to them and say, hey, um, we, we, need, we need some flexibility on your timing. And then again, 24 to 25, we're still using this. The other piece is that we have, much like you've put off the fire building, we have put off fixing our stormwater, or any of our underground piping and stormwater system, but mostly our road system. And we know with all this truck traffic, that road system needs to be replaced. So in that time, that temple, we will be com 
completely redoing our road infrastructure and anything underneath to make sure that it's solid and can last us another so we just have a lot going on um, and we wanted to make you aware i know there's a lot of interconnects probably going to have to figure out how to work together on this one. So we wanted to go over what, um, when water costs this is due to Alexandria and getting the lessons from Justin. Um, I'm not quite sure what, but uh, he looks good doing it. So uh, just a reminder that on July 1st, uh, the second of two approved rate increases goes into effect from the board. It's a 6.5% rate increase. Uh, and this is essentially uh, the uh, normal residential customer who uses about 4,000 gallons will see in their total bill. You can see the difference between your charge for the set uh, for the sanitary sewer system, our charge, our normal charge, and then what we're getting that adds to it. Again, that's why um, the grant money helps mitigate some of that uh, rate shock that our community is going through right now. <coughs> This, what we try to do is put together a holistic look of what the Lum water cost is in Alexandria. It's a little difficult. Um, we don't really get good projections um, in the out years from Virginia American Water, so we just left it the same as what it is currently. Um, your rates, we assume, stay the same based on what we've seen in the budget. That, of course, can sh everything can change. Um, Stormwater. It's charged a little bit differently. It's not a monthly bill. It's on the property tax, but we know that that has gone up, um, and people have commented on that. We know our bill is going up, uh, and, and this is what it will look like, what we're projecting, uh, about $60 a month. And then what the total is as we look forward. And again, it's iffy, but it gives you a sense. I think last year when we showed this, it was about $1,000. So you have, the, you have the same the stormwater for us is the same in 23 and 26. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah, not we, I don't know that we had a, a good number. We, we have a we have a great number for you. So we have a 10 year schedule. With yeah, I think we did, We saw the one million of spendings going to six million by by 26, but we weren't sure how that impacted the tax. Yeah, and I can send you the the Eight. full 10 year 10 year schedule. That'd be helpful. That so be FY 26 will be. Uh, Remember, it's ERU, right? So it's right. not it's not a um, it's it's three hundred fifty eight per ERU. So that for that'll be basically the equivalent of one, one small single family home. So in the FY twenty six today in FY twenty three or well, sorry, the next payment FY twenty three is two eighty. So, okay, so but there's a scheduled set of increase. I'll send it to you. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We just try to keep track of it. Um, especially as we look to set our next set of rates, what's, what's the overall impact to the community going forward? We know with inflation and everything else, it's, um, it's a challenge, and we try to balance all that, understanding that we are obligated to charge what it costs to provide service. So yeah, if you could share, share that. Again, we're not really sure what Virginia Americans is. Well, they just did. I mean, you know, they just I did know a, they just did yeah, one. But, we're, we're, but it'll be going through the SEC. And yeah, we'll be working to mitigate that. But, yeah. Um, and I'm sure they'll have another one before FY26. I think they're on a two-year cycle as well to do this. And you've seen this before. We talk about Alex, uh, or I'm sorry, Alice, um, Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. Uh, we feel that Alexandria has a different assistance message not just about poverty for us, it's really about the cost of living here uh, and how sometimes it's difficult for many of our folks to get more, get by with more than paycheck to paycheck. Uh, we, we learned as we went through, we had some of that CARES money and we're trying to deliver it out to folks that there were a lot of people who had some needs but didn't want to really be recognized as having those needs, right? They, they didn't want to come forward. Their, their neighbors and friends of all of us. So very different kind of dynamic here, but still very impactful uh, for the city, and that's why that grant money is so important. As a matter of fact, our Alice score, when you add up Alice and poverty, is just a little bit under Richmond's. So 
these numbers are balanced differently, but at the end of the day, when you total them up, they're still the same needs and the same, same kind of people. And again, we were asked where water and sewer is usually calculated when the United Way does their ALICE calculations, and it's in the housing piece of the budget. You know, people are significantly impacted by housing, by taxes <coughs> in that area, and then transportation is going up. So if you don't have any savings, uh, it's really hard to balance all of these things going forward. So it's just, it just helps us keep perspective as we do what we need to do. And it also helps when we message down at the General Assembly. Um, you often hear it's, well, Alexandria's rich. We are, we're rich in diversity, we're rich in people, we're rich in, in, in great values, but we also are challenged because of where we live uh, and the, the challenges that come because of being so close in and, and net housing costs and other costs that come with that. So it's all balanced. And I'm gonna let Justin uh, finish this up with the community outreach piece. You guys used to have some comparisons I've seen in the past that show um, some of the regional comparisons on my water. Do you guys still have that somewhere? I have um, the regional comparisons. We just did it uh, for our rates to other yeah. rates. I'll, eat, I'll send it to you. Yeah, that's probably helpful. And it's, and it's probably useful. I mean, the I, I still, I mean, years after we implemented all of this, right, I still get questions regularly about, you know, what's this bill, what's that bill, who's this one go to, what's this one cover, you know, and so I think constantly just kind of pushing out that information, explaining to people, you know, okay, Virginia America does your water supply, Alex Renew does the tunnel pouring machine, um, and, <laughs> you know, and, and just making sure everyone knows who does what, and, 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 and particularly with your bill, like why it's going up, you know, which is, is, is an important part of the story. So, no, some please. folks get it, a lot of folks don't. Lot of folks. And particularly with you know, stormwater going up as well. I mean, it's there's some big, big projects we're taking on all across all across the city right now. So. Right, and the more that we can work together with your stormwater team and, and leverage infrastructure that's either going in or is in, um, and think out of the box, I think will be helpful to to the community. But no, that's great feedback, and I'll get those for you. Yeah, thank you. Unfortunately, the numbers I just get sent you don't make the story better. They make it worse, but you know, please tell the full story. So. That's right. At least it's transparent. Yeah. Right. So we have a busy July coming up this year. As Karen had noted on the previous slides, uh, July 14th will be the welcome reception for, for the TBM where the name will be unveiled, and that will be here at afternoon. The save the dates should be coming out uh, early next week. Hopefully everything goes well with the factory test in the next few days. In addition to that, that same week in July, July 11th to the 14th, we're gonna be doing our in-person listening sessions at each of the construction sites. So thinking back to 2019 and 2018 when we initially were uh, concepting the program, we're gonna go out, meet in the street with the community, put up boards and ask, uh, have, have, have a tour window for people to come out and ask questions and provide some feedback uh, to how things are going. We'll be well underway at Outfall 2 at that point and along Coast Run. Uh, Outfall 1 will be a little boring and quiet at that point, but people can learn about what's coming up. Uh, we also have on the bottom right our Sip and See events. These have been really, really popular. Uh, we've gotten a lot of people, you know, on average, you know, we do these every, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday of every week at Coast Run right now in Outfall 2. And we get about a dozen people coming out uh, during each session. So we're touching a lot of people just through, through those Sip and See events. We have our SAG meetings scheduled out through the rest of the year, May, July, and September. That's the third week, the third Thursday of every month. And then another thing that we're looking at doing at Alex Renew is what we call the Clean Water Act at 50. Uh, we're supporting the Riverkeeper's efforts in celebrating 50 years of the Clean Water Act, uh, you know, both, both externally and internally here in Alex Renew. So that's another campaign that we're working on. Uh, something that we're also working on as part of restoration, this will be at Outfall 1 and African American Heritage Park is, I think it was maybe last year or the year before we met with MacArthur Myers in African American Heritage Park and he kind of gave us a nice history of the area and uh, some of the things that might have been missing with respect to this story in the park. 
and we've been working uh, with the city, um, the park service, and, and our archaeologists over the last six or seven months to come up with wayfinding <coughs> signage uh, to install both an African American Heritage Park as part of a restoration to help connect the story and tell the rest of the story uh, through the park, as well as connect to the story that's along the waterfront uh, at our new promenade on uh, at Outfall One at, Pe at Pendleton Street. So I think we're proposing about two signs at Pendleton and then three or four through through the park. And that's going to be extended through the trail that leads all the way down to Eisenhower Avenue. So the next step in this, we're just giving the group a heads up on this tonight. Um, the next step is we're gonna present, present to our stakeholder group, uh, get their feedback and then circle back with uh, Mr. Myers to get his, his feedback on the draft signage that we're putting out there and then move forward and get it printed and installed as part of restoration. Are these coordinated with OHA? Or? Yes. Okay, all right, yeah. I, I imagine the look and feel looks, <laughs> looks similar, so <laughs> yeah. I imagine they would be, all right. That's literally a template that we took from OHA and put in the PowerPoint. Gotcha. all right, great. Yeah, I just wanna make sure. All right, great. And then we public comment period for the public. Okay. And that's all staff has for you. We have a lot of members of the public here. Everyone gets three minutes. So. How dressy is the July 14th reception? Is it like black tie? Hot. At nine in the hot. morning? <laughs> <laughs> At nine in the morning on a, on a summer weekday? We're, we're close to shoes. Hawaiian, Hawaiian attire. <laughs> Hawaiian attire, right? Some, something cool. Yeah, something cool. All right. That is all right, um, so no public comments. Any additional discussion? Just uh, one question uh, for the group. Uh, according to the progress report, it looks like we're 70 to 75% done on design. Any surprises now that we're nearing completion of design compared to where we were when we had 10%? Everything, no, no big surprises as we finalize design? No, I think the beauty of the procurement method we chose is we had a 30% design when the RFP went out way back in February 2020. We had the eight-month collaboration with the design build teams. A lot of what we're doing right now is filling in the details, the rebar and the concrete, you know, the, the joints, gaskets, that kind of stuff. Uh, we haven't had really any big surprises or any issues uh, to date with respect to materials or, thing, or things that are necessary for our design. That is very true, Close out design, and it's not a big surprise from where you were at 10 or 20 percent. Great, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I have a question concerning um, the weight as it comes through on the streets. What have we have we discussed with VDOT the you know how much weight the streets can take and, and what the impact will be? In the aftermath, how many potholes are we looking at afterwards? What what is the? And I'm sure you're working with TNES on this too, but so we won't. So all of the the roads are usually designed for a, a highway load 93, I think is the new standard, which is old highway standard 20. We won't exceed those roads, the road weights. So we're no different than a dump truck or trash truck okay. or a vehicle going down roads. The way we end up, the way we're able to do that is we spread the load over that large length of the tractor trailer, that's why we have three articulated pieces to spread that weight out so the road isn't seeing anything more excessive than it would for a typical okay. highway vehicle. Great. The plant might. I know. I'm so, <laughs> we do, well, she we do. did, she had this look on her, as soon as I said it and looked at you and you said that, I was like, well then wait a minute, so okay. So, so there is something somewhere that we should there, be. There's a challenge with the plant. We, we probably can't make the turn into the plant with the with the long trailing gear, the way it's set up right now. So we'll, we'll likely have to pick the TBM off and take it through the plant. And there, there may be some impacts at the plant for the roads, but we, we already have it in our, our budget to repair the roads at the plant. Good. Other questions? I'm excited. Yeah. Well done. Good progress. Great job. Yeah. Seriously, every meeting, it's great news. Yeah, so far, keep that. I know. <laughs> Those are the vibes. Those are the vibes. All right. Thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Yep. Sorry for being late. Yeah, he was right behind me, and I just saw the text that he told me I went the wrong way. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
even right. <laughs> I was trying to get through to the, the and then see, I, 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 slow uh, cars in front of me when I did that. I was like, oh, he's going to win. I have two kids <laughs> who have had hundreds of soccer practices right behind this building, so I know the fastest way here. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest way to and from here many, many times. So we know, we know how to get here. Especially when we're late. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I, of all the nights, my daughter doesn't have a soccer practice here. Tonight. I was like, come on, make one up. <laughs> I'm driving over there. Come on. Uh, they have a track meet, which I'm going to try to catch part of. At hey, the when we have this at, uh, at City Hall, will you bring the signs? Because these are great signs. We don't sure. have any signs Start to provide. <laughs> As you know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I think and it's City Hall next. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, it's it's during that period of time at some point. So you, you can't miss it. What, you can't what miss it. Do you want? No problem. Uh, Thanks well, for yeah, coming. Kids running, so I also wanted to say uh, the Alex the ALX walk. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was awesome that there was a tent out there with a puppy um, as everybody was walking their dogs past because we started at Orinoco, right? And then we walked, you know, down toward Founders and then up to, I loved it, up to Barca. Get it? Barca. Okay, and then they, <laughs> and then they walked back. But you all had a tent out there so people could stop, ask questions about the project. And I... So logical, right? How practical is that? I, I was like, that, of course, that's, you know, that speaks to me, right? I just, so 